Uh, this is Sean Olson with DunneFunnels.com and today I want to explain how to use the advanced version of the e-commerce funnel that I've created here. So we're going to go through and complete a custom test purchase to show how the funnel works and then I will go through each page and the necessary settings that need to be changed in each one of those to allow this funnel to work uh, once you get it from your end. So we're going to go ahead and start with the order page. Uh, this is required to be the very first page in order to collect payment information for um, the initial product purchase. So this page is actually set up with four different product offerings. So I do have under the products um, all of the products created as well as there is custom code inside of these uh, inside of the order page that will allow for multiple quantities of each one of these products. So I don't have these uh, named with anything specific, they're simply general, but I have them set up with different price points uh, so we can see how the functionality of the quantity selector works. So we'll go ahead and open up the order page here. And I'm actually going to put the test uh, the funnel into test mode real fast. And so this will allow us to complete a test purchase and go through the entire funnel to simulate somebody visiting your page. So we'll go ahead and open this up. And when we land on the order page, uh, we will see the test credit card information here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Um, so on the page, we have the option for a featured product at the top. And uh, any of the buttons on this page will actually open a pop-up. So you can change the quantity of how many are left for this, the display price, uh, the you know, name and description of the products. Um, and then down here are similar products that are also available uh, today only you can change this to whatever you need um, and again I've priced these as seven ten and twelve dollars with the five dollar product at the top so uh, all of these buttons will actually open the pop-up and so on the pop-up uh, we have directions for them to choose their product enter their information and then confirm their order so at the very top there is an option uh, for them to select the quantities of how many products they would like. So these range anywhere from zero to five as a quantity. Um, this also can be adjusted up to however many you want. I highly recommend to have it start as zero as an option so that it's not required for them to buy every single one of the products. Um, however, this does allow them to buy uh, multiples of each product all at the same time if they wish. So if, uh, for example, product one, uh, we want to say get two of those, whatever that product may be. When we select two, we can see down here there's a dynamic order update. So this will actually total how much your order will cost uh, as you are adding products. So if we want to get, say, one of the product number two, we can see that now adds seven dollars and gives us a total down here for the products that we're purchasing. So let's go ahead and get five of product number three and four of product number four just for random odd numbers. So now that we have uh, our selections made, all of this is uh, set up down here at the bottom. We'll go ahead and just put in some test information for this and we'll make sure, uh, let me use just a little addition and make sure this is a unique order so that we can see how this works on the back end. So the initial purchase is set up. We're gonna go ahead and paste in the credit card information, uh, any CVC code and expiration date works. And so we're basically going to be charged $115 total for the products that we've uh, selected here. So once we confirm our order, this will move us to the next page in the funnel. So the, the funnel itself, actually has uh, six default main category pages. So each one of these pages uh, is actually linked uh, already in my funnel. Um, you will need to change this and I'll show you how. Um, to each one of these main category pages. Within each category page, so this is category one, and again you'd want to rename these to whatever the category name is, um, they all have their own individual subcategories as well. So in the category one page, we also have six of those subcategories. So subcategory one, you can list as many products as you want uh, within that subcategory uh, before they, you know, move to subcategory two as a different option. So uh, for example, if category one was say clothes, um, subcategory one could be shirts, subcategory two could be pants, uh, subcategory three could be hats, whatever you want to be. So the way that I have this set up is each one of these 
uh, top navigation elements will link to a different category page <clears throat> and then each one of the subcategories uh, will actually scroll down to the corresponding subcategory. So if we click subcategory 6 that brings us down to the bottom category uh, and so on. So the way that this works is the payment information that was originally put in on the order page is now passed through to this page which is built as an upsell page. So when somebody decides, okay, I'm, I'm on category one, I'm coming down to subcategory one, I like this specific product that I would like to purchase, these buttons are set up to activate a click pop, which is basically a popover version of a separate page that we have in the funnel as a single product. And again, this is also built as an OTO upsell page, which allows for a one-click upsell using the previously entered payment information. So when somebody comes to the page, they select Add to Cart. This is actually going to trigger the pop-up over the top of the page, so they actually do not leave the category page in order to make this purchase. So inside of the single product page, um, again, you'll have your listing for the individual product that they have clicked the corresponding button for. And inside of this page, they have two options. They can either purchase this product, or they can say, I don't want to buy this product, and this will take them back to the same page that they were currently on. So if we go ahead and click the add to product, uh, add product to cart. This will go ahead and charge them instantly for the product. And I have this set up to redirect back to the exact same category page that that product was purchased from to allow them to buy more similar products of those types. If they would like to purchase different products, so they're done purchasing clothes and now they want to buy shoes, for example, we can go to category two by clicking the button. And this is again linked to the separate category two page. So again, the same type of purchase options uh, are available here. So they can choose uh, any one of the products on here. So we can click um, this button here. So I don't actually have products uh, established on uh, this page, but they all work exactly the same um, as they did on the category one page. So for example, if we come down here and say select this product from category two, uh, again, we can activate that click pop. Uh, if we say no, this will simply take us back to the page um, that we were just on. So we do not have to uh, continue to ask them, do you want to buy more, do you want to buy more? We just redirect them back until they say, I do not want to buy any more products. And this button at the very top here, uh, this is actually linked to the order confirmation page. So this will be going down to the very last page in the funnel that will display a total compilation of everything that they had purchased during this buying session. So when I click this complete my order, you can see now that this will bring us over here to uh, the checkout page that shows everything that we had purchased. So here's a list of all the products that I've purchased. Um, you can see there are various quantities uh, with the names of those products corresponding as well as the price that I paid for those products. Um, so it looks like I may have used this uh, email address before, so that's why uh, we're having something else show up here. Um, but if they want to continue purchasing additional products, there are similar suggested products down here at the bottom. So people that bought these also bought these sorts of products. Uh, so we can again click the add to cart option. The same type of click pop option comes over the page so they can again buy an additional product. We click add to cart and then this one will actually redirect back to that same category page. Uh, you can also change these to redirect back <clears throat> to the order confirmation page as you need. Um, but again, we can see that uh, an additional diamond ring product uh, was purchased just now. So uh, we have the ability to continuously allow the person to buy even more products even after they have left uh, the initial buying option. If they would like to go back and buy more products from the funnel itself, they can use this button here on the confirmation page, go back to the category one and continue to purchase uh, as they need. So this will allow them to literally buy endless products uh, moving forward and add them to their cart until they just cannot buy anymore. <laughs> so um, there is an additional button on each one of the order confirmation pages at the bottom that also links uh, to the order confirmation page. So everything allows sort of an endless loop 
of buying and allows your customer to fully engage in every one of the products uh, that you have to offer. So let's go ahead and come back to the funnel and we will go through each one of the necessary steps to change the settings that are needed in order to allow this entire funnel to function uh, as you have seen so far. Okay, so let's go over each one of the customizations that will need to be made for the pages in order to allow this funnel to function as you need it to. So um, each time you are selling a product, you'll need to create a product within that page. So in the order page itself, uh, you'll simply click on the products tab. Uh, there will be options for four different products here. So um, each one of these will obviously be named whatever you want and priced um, as you need. So inside of the price itself, you do have the option to use a price display override. If you are simply using a dollar amount as your price, I don't recommend uh, putting anything different. It will automatically show up as five dollars with a dollar sign in front of it on the page itself. Uh, but if you have a product that is say, free plus shipping or something that requires words to be included within the product um, title, you can add those price display overrides uh, here as needed. So if you do use a price display override, uh, you're going to want to add that into the order page itself so that that can be uh, recognized when somebody is choosing that product. So we're going to come into the order page page editor and there is some custom code that has been added to the page to allow for the quantity selector option. So inside of the tracking codes under the setting tab, uh, we're gonna open this and go to the footer code. And in here, there are two things that you can adjust. Uh, first of all is the start quantity and the stop quantity. This is the minimum amount of each product that will be available for purchase. Uh, I recommend to leave this as zero so that if somebody does not want to buy one of the four products you're offering, um, they do not have to select it. If you start this with one, that means they are automatically required to purchase one of every single product. Uh, the stop point is the maximum number of the products that they can purchase. So if you only want to offer a limited amount, um, you can put a specific number here. If if you want to offer uh, technically unlimited, I would recommend to make this uh, number 99. Most of the time people are not going to buy 99 of one thing, uh, but if they want to buy 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever, um, that, that 99 will allow them to purchase uh, usually enough of your product. Uh, the other options are at the bottom. And again, this is optional based on if you are actually changing the product ID. So that is where, uh, not the product ID, the uh, price display override. So if that is uh, something that you are going to be having uh, technical words like free plus shipping or something to that effect, uh, you would actually enter that in the value right here. So where this one says $7.99, uh, this will actually correspond to the product ID itself. So I will show you real quick how you can grab the product ID. So once you've created the product itself, you can simply right click on the word edit for that product and open that link in a new tab. And the product ID, uh, regardless of what this page looks like, the product ID is this six digit number right here. So if we were to copy this and come into the order page itself, uh, this will allow us to match the words uh, that we put in the price display override. So under the product itself, if you are using uh, free plus shipping or some sort of words, uh, this is where um, you will want to copy this uh, code itself. So you would copy whatever you have in the price display override uh, and add that to the order page itself under this tracking code section here. So the page, uh, the product ID needs to be added and the actual price display override. So under the footer tracking here, um, the product ID would be this six digit code and then the words that correspond with what you want that to show as on the page uh, would go here. So this would actually show um, the price display override instead of the uh, dollar amount itself. Um, so this is only necessary to be changed if you are using something other than uh, just the price for the product itself. So other than that, there's not any other changes that need to be made. Uh, if you are simply um, offering one product, uh, you can 
eliminate this entire section here uh, by clicking the delete button here. Um, if you want to add more products that are available here, uh, you can simply clone this entire section. So you could push uh, that button and add uh, more of these so we could even uh, move that one up and even say one more. So then you can have uh, more of those available. So this is um, an option for you to add more than just uh, four products, but the, the funnel itself comes with only four currently. So we're going to go ahead and move to the next page. And we will cover how to customize the category pages with the settings that you need there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off Stripe test mode. Save the page. All right, so for category one, we're going to come into this page, and there are a number of different things uh, that we'll need to do inside of this page. So we'll go ahead and open up the page editor, and the first step will be to link this page to all of the other category pages. Uh, so we will need to uh, do a little bit of manual work on our end to copy the links for the corresponding category pages. So we'll want to have category two, category three, four, and five um, as links. And you can simply use something uh, as a new um, notepad, whatever you need, and can copy and paste those links in here so that they are readily available, as you will need to do this for each one of the category pages individually, uh, because the links to your pages will be different than the links to my pages because they use my custom uh, URLs. So you'll need to um, add the links to each one of these. So for category two, uh, what I highly recommend to do is while you're editing the page, you can actually use two different versions of your own account. So when we go to uh, access this category two page, I would right click on this and open the link in a new tab. So this will actually allow me to have two versions of my page open so that it is easier for me to access everything uh, and not have to close out so many times. So we're going to go ahead and open the page editor back up there. And for category two, uh, I just want to open that and allow the full URL uh, for the page itself to load. And then we can copy that so that we can actually skip the redirect that happens from the funnel step URL to the page URL. So with this page loaded, uh, my computer's going a bit slow at the moment. All right, so we'll go ahead and copy this link here and come into our category one page and uh, we just need to highlight all of these words uh, so we'll go ahead and highlight category two and then click the link button and so we're going to go ahead and remove the hashtag and paste in category two so that will allow uh, this specific uh, set a text to now link to the category two page and you'll follow the same process uh, for each one of those but before I um, copy a new link I'm gonna go ahead and paste it here so that I don't have to reopen this page again to get this link so when I created the pages all of the links are exactly the same except for the last number is changed so category three category four five and six um, simply have to change that number there so if that's how you've set up your own pages uh, they will come with those numbers automatically for you um, so if you do not change those all you have to do is change the number for each one of those so for category three um, you can see I've already added that in so that one is already linked there uh, four five and six are done the same way so very simple to add uh, the same link and simply change the number so we'll want to make sure we do all these changes uh, and then save the page before you leave uh, the category one page uh, the next step that you will need to do is to add all of the products. So individually, uh, you will want to title the product, uh, show the price for the product up here. Um, so if you want this to be a $5 product, um, you'll want to put that price in here, um, give it a brief description, and uh, th this portion will be done for the product itself. Um, you'll want to line out the 
titles, prices, images, and everything for all of your products individually uh, before we move to the next step to actually link the button for that product to the corresponding product uh, page itself. So once you have completed the steps for all of those, uh, again, save your page. Um, I highly recommend saving multiple times while you're working on your pages uh, to avoid losing any information there. Um, the very next step that we will do before we get into uh, adding the click pops is there are two buttons on the page that need to link directly to the order confirmation page. So we'll come back to the second version of our account and come down to the order confirmation. And we'll just go ahead and same thing, open up this page. We're going to copy the URL here. And you can close this if you want. And we'll come back and we'll just open up that button, open the set action, come down to go to website URL. So when this is clicked, uh, you can choose to have this open in the same window or open in a new window. But we'll want to just go ahead and paste the full URL right here. Uh, one note is that anytime you are pasting in ClickFunnels, you will want to use Control or Command, and the letter V is in Victor. So keyboard pasting is the only way that the information will actually be saved in our system. So if you're trying to right-click and paste uh, using your mouse, for example, so if I right-click here and paste this link, uh, it will <clears throat> it will go into the form. However, when I save the page, it will not retain that information. So it's very important that you do use uh, keyboard pasting. And I recommend to leave the link set as open in the same window so that uh, somebody feels that they are simply redirected and they're finished with their purchases. So again, once you have added this link to the button on the bottom of the page, as well as the red button up here on the top of the page, again, you will go ahead and save this information. And so those links will be uh, captured in the page. So the very next step um, in order to complete category one's page is to um, actually create individual pages for each one of the products itself. So there is one single product page that I have created and inside of this is the click pop. This is the pop over so there's a semi-transparent background so that it allows just the white portion here to show over the top of your category one page when the button is clicked. So we're going to need to clone this funnel step every single time we want to create a new product. So we'll go ahead and uh, inside of this funnel step here, you would simply click clone funnel step for every new product that you want to add into your funnel. Uh, once you have the funnel step created, you will come up here and create the product itself, um, just as you would for all the rest. And this page itself, um, will actually be uh, used to activate that product on the category one page. So because this product is being sold on the category one page, we want to link it to the category one page itself as well. So we're going to go ahead and I'm not going to save any of the changes I've made because I don't need them, um, but you'll want to make sure you've saved all the changes that we've done up to this point before uh, closing out of this page here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the link for this page, which again uh, is simply the dash one here. And so when I have uh, this link, we're going to come into our single product page and we'll go ahead and open the page editor. And there is actually two different places that you'll want to paste this link back to the category one page. So when somebody clicks on this option on the category one page and this page pops over the top, they have two choices. They can either purchase the product, and this uh, is actually set for um, yes link, so you do not need to change this. This allows them to accept that one click upsell. Uh, the no link, so the words that are at the bottom, is where you'll want to start with the first one. So. I already have this link to my page, um, and if you do not change the path for this page, then you won't have to change this link. Uh, but inside of uh, this link here, we want to have that link back to the category one page so that if somebody says, no, I don't want this product specifically, it simply takes them back to the same page that they were on uh, when they chose to view this uh, product. Uh, the other place that you will want to have 
for this pay, uh, product specifically to link back to the category one page is in the uh, general settings so when somebody does select that yes I want to purchase this product uh, because they're purchasing from that category one page you want to redirect them back after that initial purchase or of this product uh, to the category one page so you will want to paste the link right here in the on submit go to field so this will redirect them back after that purchase to the same page and allow them to continue to buy more products from category one or link to other pages and complete that same uh, cycle so once you have uh, pasted into the on submit go and into the no link um, if you do decide to change uh, you will need to change these links as they will be different for your pages um, then you'll be able to have that person redirected back to those pages uh, after each purchase so again save the page and then uh, we can move to the next product itself and we will continue uh, creating new funnel steps adding the product and pasting um, the links into those pages as long as you are creating products uh, and funnel steps that link to category one's page you will not need to paste any new links after you have done that for your first page uh, as when you clone the funnel step after that first page creation uh, those same settings will be transferred to the clone version of that page so you will only need to do this the first time to link to your pages so once you have created all of the products that you want to use in your category one page the final step for this will be to actually link this product page itself into the category one page inside of the button that corresponds with that product. So under the add to cart buttons, uh, when we click, we want the, the click pop to come over the top. So we will come into the page editor and we will open our other tab and we're gonna go to the publishing tab for the single product page. So once we've opened the publishing tab, we're gonna click get click pop code and so this is a code that will uh, have kind of two parts one is this link right here that is what we will paste into our button and this javascript portion here which is actually going to be uh, already inside of the category pages that will allow that function to happen so the only portion that you will actually need is the link right here that you will put into the buttons URL action so because we cannot uh, copy only a specific portion of this based on how uh, this page functions I recommend to just go ahead and copy the entire code again open up your notepad if you are uh, finished with those links you can um, delete them we'll go ahead and put the code just below this so we want to simply copy uh, after the quotation so we do not want the quotation in the link so we want the full HTTPS and all the way down to the end of the random number letter string and before the quotation so we do not want the quotations in our link and when we copy that we can simply come back over to our category one page open the add to cart button and under the set action when they click the button we want it to go to website URL so this is simply the the link that we are going to have activated and paste that into this buttons URL action here we do want this to open in the same window so that the page simply pops over the top and they can see in the background that they are still inside of the page there is simply a pop over that they are working on so once you have again used keyboard pasting to paste that in there I recommend to save the page um, and continue to repeat this process for each of the new funnel steps so this funnel step would now be linked to this category page and when this button is clicked that click pop will activate over the top and allow someone to purchase that product specifically and then be redirected back to this page so the next uh, steps would basically be to repeat these same processes for each of the products in each one of the category pages until you have added all of the products that you would like to individually uh, sell within your funnel so again just to uh, to summarize the the main steps you'll want to add the navigation so all the 
the links in the navigation will need to be adjusted. The subcategories will automatically um, scroll when this option is clicked to the corresponding page. So there will not need to be any changes made there. Uh, we want to make sure that we have each of these pages linked directly to the order confirmation page. So you will need to make sure that you make that change inside of every single one of these funnel steps and then add the products themselves uh, with that click pop link to each one of the buttons as well as obviously adjusting the description um, and images for your products in each one of the pages. So the order confirmation page is the very last page uh, that we will be working on and this allows uh, for one single redirect back to a category page. So <clears throat> what I recommend is to just link back to the category one page with the final button that allows them to continue shopping after they have uh, reached the confirmation page if for whatever reason they would like to purchase more products. So we're going to go ahead and open this page. Okay, so in the order confirmation page, uh, there will be a couple of different links that we will add to this page. One will be to redirect back to the category one page to allow them to continue purchasing more products and shopping, um, as well as there will be <clears throat> different products that will be linked to um, individually on this page that are simply recommended products based on what they already purchased. So these will be standard for every single person that lands on this page, but it simulates uh, sort of like Amazon where once they've purchased something, they're recommending more products um, for this person to buy. So um, inside of this page itself, uh, I have places for four options of product purchases. There is, uh, again, um, an element here that will show all of the products that have been purchased during this session and this button here will need to link back <clears throat> to the category one page so again I have added my link here but you will want to copy the link for this category one page and paste that into the go to website URL uh, option for the button here um, again the same process will apply for <clears throat> the products that are being sold on this page that you will need to edit the images, uh, description, title, price of the product, um, and add the link for this specific page's click pop code into the button action. So again, you will be um, creating a new funnel step, a clone of the product page, and adding uh, your information there, and then using the click pop link as shown previously to add to these buttons. Once that has been completed, uh, this page will be set up and allow it to link back into the funnel uh, as well as <clears throat> purchase more products directly here before uh, the customer leaves your funnel. So this will allow endless product purchases to be made throughout the funnel uh, without having the person have to put in their payment information more than one time on the initial order page. That information will continue to be passed through and allow for more products to be purchased. So if you do have additional questions on this, please let me know and I will definitely be glad to help you get those answered and make sure that your funnel is set up correctly. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to talking with you soon.